My group is doing Yelp's review filtering algorithm. So the motivation is that algorithms can have inherently unethical procedures when filtering out reviews, and reviews uh, are filtered by uh, quality and reliability, and then Yelp tries to help consumers gain insight to make decisions. So the problem is that the filtering algorithm can misclassify credible reviews as not recommended and deceptive reviews as recommended. So for Yelp's background, it's a platform for seeking and submitting advice, businesses seeking feedback, and the ratings are paired with written text for a review. The recommended reviews calculate average rating, influence consumer decisions, and impact business revenue. So this is the current location for the Dallas Hotel. There's the average rating, 97 reviews, the recommended review, the review itself, and uh, sparse data that we could collect, and then at the bottom is the unrecommended review. So the Yelp's metrics is that they have 150 million total reviews, most recommended, 20% uh, not recommended, removed is because of terms of service violations and the distribution is below for five and five, four, three, and two, one stars. And the top reviewed businesses by category are shopping, restaurants, and home and local services. The top demographics include um, 35 to 54 years old that finish college and have uh, 100K income. So for understanding Yelp, uh, not recommended reviews are still accessible, does not censor free speech, and can be recommended when the algorithm changes. So reviews are removed by terms of service agreement and uh, as well as court rulings. So the Yelp filtering algorithm uh, tries to remove purchase, bribe, social political protests, uh, not credible and unrelated, un understandable language. And the uh, algorithm is undisclosed to prevent manipulating the system. So the Yelp dataset collection, uh, the Yelp official dataset does not include uh, not recommended reviews. And also they might inherit clean biases so the external audit is used through sampling for a better observational study and scrape using Python script. The two-stage sampling procedure is proportional subgrouping, which preserves consistency. So we sample cities that adopt Yelp and then sample the restaurants from those cities. Restaurants are chosen because they have the most consistent participation. So the Yelp clean data set has uh, the majority of 89% recommended and uh, through projection of equal probability it's more than the 150 million reviews from the restaurants and cities that we gathered. Removed reviews are not accessible and uh, the multivariate logistic regression is a unified model with binary prediction to um, predict recommended versus not recommended and the features are from metadata adjusted for asymmetry scaled from one to zero for direct comparisons and then the coefficients measure feature importance. So for binary prediction, there's true positives and true negatives, which are accurate. There's false positives and false negatives, which are misclassifications, and significance by p-value, which is a test statistics for probable evidence. So there's the equations for accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 is a harmonic mean between precision and recall. So from the restaurant metadata, we have name, address, city, average ratings, number of views, number of restaurants by City Hub, the Yelp website, the Yelp listing order, and you combine it with the reviews data set. And for the review metadata, we have date, number of friends, has profile picture, location, number of photos, user rating, number of reviews, uh, review text, username, recommended ratio, uh, just sorry, recommended, and uh, restaurant ID. Uh, so for the features created from metadata, we have number of days published, uh, since Yelp's inception, which was 2004, and then has been updated, has a profile picture, user to restaurant distance from the Google API, uh, word length of text, and then word length without stop words, which is uh, common words, uh, the number of sentences, recommended ratio, which is recommended reviews divided by total reviews, word length of restaurant name, address, and user rating subtracted by average rating. So for the process text feature creation, we use the Google Dictionary API to find a percentage of words spelled correctly. 
and then use readability statistics to uh, solve for text difficulty. So there's the formula, and then uh, we use words and um, sentences and characters to find the, the score for kindergarten to college level reading. So for the naive Bayes text classifier, we have, uh, it doesn't check for grammar and word order, so it trains uh, words by the occurrence to classify as a label. So for a positive label, this place is good, this place is bad, the difference is good and bad. So those are the trained words for the positive label, specifically good. And then the naive Bayes equation, we have uh, the uh, true positives over the summation of true positive over false positive, which is the same as uh, precision uh, equation. And then it gets complicated as more words get trained in the process. So this is a graph showing how the naive Bayes equation works. And then the deceptive um, opinion spam corpus is another data set that we looked at for truthful and deceptive reviews. It's similar to Yelp because it's opinionated. It has community guidelines from TripAdvisor, Expedia, Hotels, Orbitz, Priceline. And Deceptive is from Mechanical Turk, Amazon, and they earn money, so it alters the incentives, and uh, they can write deceptive reviews for a monetary gain. So there's the precision recall and F1 score. So for extreme text classifiers, we test the violations are filtered before removal. It's from the AI data set from Google, so uh, they're from the Google platform to filter out online harassment, specifically YouTube, Google Blogger, Google Maps, Google Plus. So there's the toxic, severely toxic, obscene, threat, insult, identity hate by observation, precision recall, F1 score. And then separately, we have a sentiment natural processing for um, Stanford. And then it considers word order and grammar and classifies individual words split by punctuation identify parts of speech, proper nouns, linked to pronouns, and then a sentence. So total sentiment is just a summation of weights from very negative to neutral to very positive. And then uh, average sentiment is total, total sentiment divided by the total sentences. For the recurrent neural tensor network on the same Stanford uh, system, uh, it's nested phrases stemming from individual words so slow is negative and enjoyed is positive, but overall uh, it's the, the sentence is deemed as positive, split by the comma for this sentence. Uh, so the features created from process text include readability, spelling, deceptive, uh, positive labels, negative labels, total sentiment, average sentiment, and the average sentiment subtracted by user rating and the average user sentiment subtracted by average restaurant rating. So for multivariate logistic regression, we measure the collective relationship between recommended and features. So we balance the data set 50 with 50 for equal emphasis for predicting both review types. And we reduce the model by insignificant features that do not contribute to the model. So the full model looks like this. And for recommended, uh, Text sentiment to average rating, user rating, and text total sentiment uh, is more towards recommended. And uh, number of sentences, text average sentiment, and user rating to average rating is toward not recommended reviews. And the reduced model basically says the same thing. So we want to rate critically, write concisely with an overall message, and then express variations in sentiment. So there's precision recall and F1 score for the full and reduced model. So the additional guidelines include submit for businesses with less, re less reviews, write with mild complexity, less common words, accumulate data in terms of friends, reviews, photos, and recent reviews, and update reviews less. So insignificant features uh, basically uh, shows the equal probability sampling is verified by restaurant name, address, and listing order. And Yelp does not filter for extreme comments, including the ones that we have uh, talked about. Identity, hate, insult, threat, obscene, severe, toxic, toxic. So the ethics is that information uh, can be useful, important, misguided, or wrong. And pulling information towards general consensus makes Yelp less likely to be wrong. And is a justified reflection of the collective experience. So it's dependent on the end user to take advice and make informed decisions. In conclusion, Yelp's filtering algorithm promotes critical ratings, genuine reviews, quality of text, 
reliability of context and insight with the conclusions that we've made. Uh, thanks. And that's the citations. That's basically it. Cool. That was it.